Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome, it is great to have you. If you are a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the first video in a new playlist, which is always very exciting for me. It means a lot of new content coming. And this playlist is about non-parametric methods or non-parametric statistics. This video will be a basic introduction into what non-parametric methods are using information you probably already know. We'll talk about what makes non-parametric methods unique. And finally, we will learn about the first non-parametric method you will often see, and that is called the sign test. So let's go ahead and begin. So we know this series is about non-parametric methods, but what does parametric mean? Now non-parametric implies that there is something that is parametric. What is the difference between the two? Now most statistical methods we are familiar with say confidence intervals, t-tests, ANOVA, linear regression, etc., make assumptions about the probability distribution of the population under analysis. Often that's a normal distribution. So a lot of the assumptions underneath these things we are more familiar with is the assumption that the observations are normally distributed. From this assumption, we can develop sampling distributions. And then from the sampling distributions, we can derive sample statistics, such as the mean, standard deviation, and so on and so forth. So parametric methods are a family of statistical methods that most often make the assumption that the underlying observations are normally distributed. So what about non-parametric? As we said, parametric tests, assumptions are made about the underlying distribution of the population. Non-parametric methods, however, do not make or require these assumptions. Sometimes we call these methods distribution free for that reason. There is no underlying assumption about the distribution of the data. While parametric methods mostly require quantitative data, non-parametric methods allow us to work with qualitative or nominal or ordinal data. And actually most of the time, even quantitative data is converted to nominal or ordinal data for use with non-parametric methods, the most common type being ranked observations. So for many non-parametric methods, even though we have a set of quantitative data, we don't really analyze them as quantitative data. We do something else to them. We take them to a different type, whether it be a nominal or ordinal data set. So let's start with something we already know, the median. So remember the median is just the center of a data set once you line them all up in order. So here we have 12 observations, therefore to find the median is the middle two values. So the median of this data set, which we've used in many videos before, it's salary data, is 73,600, that's the sixth observation, plus 78,800, the seventh observation, divided by two, and our median is 76,200. Now let's look at this in a non-parametric mindset. So notice here, I've X'd out all of the other values. All we are worried about to find the median here are the middle two. What we're actually interested in are the numbers on the top, and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. So here's our median. 76,200. Now, because this is the median by definition, we have six values or six out of 12 below the median, and we have six out of 12 above the median. So the proportion on both ends is 0 0.5 or a half. Now, what we can ask ourselves is, in this case, is it likely that the median of our data set is 76,200 as we would hypothesize? Well, in this case, of course it is. We're kind of moving backwards. We're starting with the quantitative way of doing the median, and now we're gonna transition into the non-parametric. But what I want you to focus on here in this slide is not even the 76,200. 
I want you to focus on the middle part, six out of 12 on one side and six out of 12 on the other side. So what about this value? So what about a median of $60,200? Let's say we hypothesize that that is the median of this data set. So we have three out of 12 observations below that. We have nine out of 12 observations above that value. So in this case, is it likely that the median of our data is $60,200 as we hypothesized? Well, see here, maybe not, probably not. Because we know that the median by definition is the middle of our data set, but three out of 12 on one side and nine out of 12 on the other side is not really the middle of our data. So now I have removed all of the observations. We're gonna focus now on the median location. We're gonna go strictly non-parametric here. All we're worried about are actually the numbers on top. So look at this first one. So remember our value here was like the 60,000 figure. We're gonna look at that as a location, not as an actual numerical value. So the location or the address of 3.5 which is between the third observation and the fourth observation. So what we are saying here, our null hypothesis, as you can see down there below, is that the median is a proportion of 0.25. And of course the null hypothesis is that it does not equal 0.25. Now use common sense. We know that the median by definition is half the data set below, half the data set above. If our null hypothesis is 0.25, that should raise some alarm bells. What about the middle location? Well, here it's obvious. So here we have half below and half above. So our null hypothesis that the median is 0 0.50 is actually something we're not going to reject in this case because it is by definition equal to that. But what about way over here? What about the position or the location of 10.5, which is halfway between 10 and 11 there. Well, in this case, our null hypothesis is that the median is 0.833. Well, think about what the median means. Again, the median 0.50. So is 0.833 equal to 0.50? Probably not. So we would probably reject that null hypothesis. So in this scenario, we're not even looking at the actual data values. We're looking at the position or the location of these hypothesized medians. And then we're saying, do those match up to the hypothesized median, which is 0.50? It's about location. Okay, so the sign test. Now the sign test is oftentimes or usually the first method you will learn about in non-parametric statistics because it's the most basic, it's the easiest to understand. So I went ahead and put our data back to where it was before. And now we are gonna make a hypothesis that the median of this data set or the middle point is $60,200. So we can see that our null hypothesis is median equals 60,200. And our alternative is that it's not equal to 60,200. So what we're asking here is the null hypothesis at the proportion below or above, we're gonna focus on below in this case, is 0.50 or that it's not 0.50. So those are the hypothesis tests we're setting up. Are these two tests down here equal or are they the same? So the way the sign test works is we do this. We put a plus sign under each data value that falls below our hypothesized median, and we put a minus sign or a negative sign on every data observation that falls above that. And then all we do is count up the plus signs. So in this case, we have three out of 12. So there's a proportion of 0 0.25. Then we ask ourselves, is that 0 0.25 similar to the 0 0.50 that we are hypothesizing? Well, in this case, no. Or I guess in this case, maybe. We would actually have to do the statistical test to check. But we can see that 0 0.25 and 0 0.50 are not similar. So what about this, where we hypothesize that the median is 76,200? Now this is a bit of a nonsense slide, but I'm just doing it as an example. 
because of course the median is 76,200. But we can see if we just use the sign test, we have six below that, so we have six plus signs, then we have six negative signs because there are six above that hypothesized median. So six out of 12 is 0 0.5, our proportion is 0 0.5, which is the same as our null hypothesis. And of course, since it is the same as our null hypothesis, we would not reject that null. So what about a median of $97,600? Same process. We put plus signs for each data observation that is below that, and then two negative signs for the two that are above that. Now we have 10 out of 12, so it's a proportion of 0 0.833 repeating. So does that equal 0 0.50, or is that close enough to 0 0.50? Don't know, probably not. So in this case, we probably lean towards rejecting that null hypothesis down there below. So you can see what we're doing here is focusing on the position of each value. It's not really important what the value is, it's where it falls relative to the hypothesized median. So what we have is essentially a binomial distribution problem. So remember, a binomial has two, or binary, possibilities, hence binomial. What we did, we turned the quantitative measures, which is salary data, into two discrete categories, either below with a plus sign or above with a negative sign. The actual values themselves didn't matter. Therefore, we can use the binomial distribution to test our hypothesis about the median. Now note, any observations that are the same as the hypothesized median are removed and the test proceeds as usual. So if our hypothesized median was $70,000 and there was a value of $70,000 in our data set, we would actually just remove that value and then proceed as we would before. We would have one less observation. So if you notice, using the sign test required no assumptions about the distribution of the observations. The only reason we actually used the underlying numbers was to determine if they were above, below, or in rare cases, equal to the hypothesized median. We didn't make any assumptions if the data was normally distributed, uniformly distributed, or whatever else. All we did was hypothesize about the median, Rank order the data visually, which is actually technically optional. You don't have to do that in stat software, but it's easier to see if we put them in order. Then we sort of see or note which observations fall below or above. That's it. Then we remove any values that are equal to the median. And actually we would do that first. I should have that bullet point third. So hypothesize about the median, rank order the data visually, which is technically optional. We would remove any values that are equal to the median and then see which observations fall below or above. And then eventually we'll use the binomial distribution to test our hypothesis. This video was just an overview of kind of what's going on and how we look at data differently in a non-parametric mindset. An important point here, the median, you gotta think about it. Remember the median is a measure of location. It is an address. So the underlying values don't actually really matter. We line them up. And if the seventh in line of our data set is five or 5,000, it doesn't really matter. It's its position in the data set in terms of how it's rank ordered. So in the next video, we will work through the problem. So we'll go ahead and go into Excel. I'll show you how to do the sign test in Excel. We'll use the binomial distribution to test our hypothesis actually using the test. And then we can make a decision to fail to reject the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that was our introduction to non-parametric methods. Again, I just wanted to give you an overview, get your mind thinking about data in a different way in a non-parametric mindset. Remember, in non-parametric mindsets, we don't really care about the underlying distribution. All we care about is actually the location or the position of our observations and our data set. We really don't care about the observations themselves, the values, really at all. 
all we're doing with the values is using those to determine where the locations are. So it's a very different way of thinking about a data set than what we're typically used to. But when we don't have to make assumptions about the underlying distribution, it frees us up to do different types of techniques on a data set. So we'll stop there. We'll get into more details and calculations in upcoming videos, learn about other techniques and non-parametric methods that I think are really interesting. So I hope you enjoyed the video. You got your mind thinking differently about data and how we might analyze it. And on top of that, it's actually pretty cool. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Bye-bye.